Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. pride in these experiences I am a woman of God because I see visions every day I am a man of God because I see visions a believer who is walking based on the word now closes the Bible and says I'm going on a three day fasting Lord what is in this vision that I can't see are we together now and you are fasting and praying and people begin to pray until they land in the hospital with, with problems of bipolar. Talk to me. Am, am I, am, am, it's true. Doctors will tell you. How many times have we gone? I'm not, I'm not insulting the people. Don't get me wrong. But many of them continue to pray until they have encounters. Remember the gentleman that came from one of the cities, the Jesus guy and the Judas? Do you think that guy started like that? He started as a sincere servant of Christ, but with the obsession for encounters. People will get up in the night and they are looking for anything superstitious. The moment light, there are birds that come in front of my window every morning. They keep pecking on the window. I can, I can, now, I can now snap those things. I mean, anybody who studied the biological sciences know what these birds are trying to do. Sometimes they sharpen their beak. I can now get up and keep recording these birds for one week and say I have divine messengers. How many, how many birds were messengers in the Bible? Birds brought raven. Yes, I agree. How many birds spoke in the Bible? They only brought food and leaf from Noah to confirm that the flood had finished. Many of you were doing well, believing the truth of scripture, until this era of visions just came and corrupted the purity of your experience. I'm not saying visions are wrong. We need encounters. Are we together? So because of this, many people now started studying Scientology. Are we together? And all kinds of new age movement. The, the ability to align your body and your consciousness to the forces of the universe in the seven regions of the earth. And before you know it, it starts working. Because you have touched something that is not of God. Two years down the line, you, you are seeing abilities working in you automatically that you know cannot be regulated. There are many people walking in power today. They are not devilish, but their appetite for power and the supernatural open them up to anything. Whether it is a shrine, whether it is a man of God, whether it is a prophet, just give me something that will shut the mouth of, of, of the people from my region. And you receive something because everyone that seeks... There are people who have studied transcendental meditation and yoga all in a bit to mix religions. They just want this out of body experience desperately. They want to come back with messages and they've had it. And many of them, you know that there are different pseudo-Christian sects that have all kinds of encounters. They can, they, they can program your body to have all kinds of astral travels. To the point now we are confused in the body. Because we have to balance this. It is alright when an insincere person encounters these graces. But what happens if these graces have been received by your friend? Do you call your friend fake? Do you call your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife fake?
one of the latest ones now in the body of Christ is prophetic chanting. Everybody is holding red, uh, 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 what they call it, phones. With all kinds, you don't sing, you just chant. Chanting didn't start today. And it is scriptural that there is a dimension of prophetic worship. But if you are not careful, very soon, one day, you will be hearing the tongues. And it will sound like Arabic. The communicator does not even know when he has delved into something See, look, let me tell you. Please hear me, believers. The apostolic and the prophetic were designed by God to create the coordinates, the boundaries of the growth of believers as they themselves align to Christ. Be careful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Be careful. Do you know that the concept of chanting started from our forefathers it was a tra anybody here that comes from regions where they do traditional festivals you will know that these are things that is it's a mystery in the spirit that was hijacked by dark powers and it's part of the things that because god is preparing the church for the move of god and so some of these ordinances have been restored but if they are not guided any move is usually corrupted when there is no balance. So people begin to delve into some of these things. I'm showing you issues that need to be addressed to stabilize the growth of the church. Very soon we will not have choruses again in church. As soon as we come, we say, praise the Lord, welcome to Koinonia. Mike will start playing some. Everybody will just start shouting like a madman. You find your own path and you are singing. I'm not being sarcastic. Until one day, someone will find out that the more you sing, the more your neighbor is getting mad. And you are wondering. Have you not seen people whose hands were laid on them? And the moment hands were laid on them, they started having demonic encounters. It is not because they are the, 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 those who laid hands are necessarily evil. They themselves have not vetted the source of the power. They are sincere people. Random laying on of hands. More grace. It says lay hands suddenly on no man. Because laying on of hands is a system of transfer. It's also a system of exchange. Are we together? Now there are different other concepts coming. There is no heaven again. So says the vision that other people are coming with. Or many people are saying the heaven other people saw. Now they are seeing other higher heavens. Oh, come on, please. You, you go online and see people who have had encounters and came back with spirits who are saying forget all that thing. Because let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. Satan wants everything God wants. And the moment Satan discerns a move of God, he will come. Certain Christian sects, have you read how they started? Was it not encounters? They had encounters with spirit beings who attempted to correct scripture. And that's how error came. A time will come, I pray it does not happen, where you will be afraid to go to church because you are not sure of what that version of teaching will open you up to. Even these mysteries you see, these mysteries you see, if it's not guided, you will enter into mysticism in the name of mysteries. Every mystery in the scripture is just a mystery to be revealed. It is the revelation of the mysteries that we are concerned about. Because the highest mystery in the New Testament is Christ. And the highest mystery is called the mystery of godliness. That's it. That Christ became a man. The mystery of his incarnation and his virgin birth. Are we together now? Yes. His suffering in the flesh. His ascension. His glorification. That is the highest mystery. Every other one is an auxiliary mystery that connects to it. So that you don't just say. There are many people who say. Ah, they send me texts. 
Papa, thank you for this mystery. Tonight I have a night with you and I want to share a mystery. I said, where, where is this one coming from now? And the terrible thing is if you don't balance this, anybody who fishes demon from anywhere and try to trace it to you. <laughs> Miracle alert has made many people lazy. They have not seen that is proof of God's mercy. And sometimes it comes to encourage the faith of people. There is a level of spiritual knowledge if you have been given, you would never have miracle alert. God will say you are joking. This is too much laziness for the level of revelation you have. Go and get a job. Go and, and give value. To whom much is given, talk to me. Much is required. Notice the people that have miracle alerts most times. There are people that God is encouraging. You are wondering why it didn't happen to you. I'm giving you the answer now. Because God is saying, I am not. Yes. Yes, sir. You can have it. But let listen to me. If I sit down now and I say, Lord, why will, where will you give me miracle alert? God will say, Habba. God speaking, Habba. My son. To whom much is given. Don't, don't, don't embarrass the investments of God on your life. There are some things that were meant to encourage believers. You have been taught value. You have been taught diligence. Are we together now? You cannot expect God to just continue to do all of No. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Come up hither. Is a call to know where to stand on these matters among many that you must know where to stand that you be unshakable you'll be immovable please listen to me that when you say I am a man of faith you know what you are saying I will never in my life with what I know today place value on anything in my life outside of Christ my true worth is the blood of Jesus my true worth is not pounds and dollars and cars please listen to me you will never find me depressed not over money not over house I will excel God will bring the houses he will bring the cars but never will it be that these things become the basis of my confidence. A newer car or a better car will not suddenly make me know that, ah, God, you are faithful. He's faithful. The apex of his faithfulness has been demonstrated already in what Christ did. Is God speaking to someone now? This must be the basis of your confidence. This is, this is, a, this is a vaccination against depression. Apostle, look at my life. Guess how old you think I am? Can you believe that I'm 41? Nothing is happening in my life. And you leave God. I know that God wants to bless you. But if you leave God because nothing is happening, you were not taught well. Leaving God because things are not going well in your life, my brothers and my sisters, is proof of weakness. It's not strength. What shall separate us from the love of God? That you get to a point where you stand. It is not what happens or what does not happen that governs your faith. Apostle, I'm coming for miracle service next week. I'm trusting God for a child. I agree. God will give you a child. But that you can look at God and say, Lord, if in my lifetime I don't have a child, you are still Lord. You are still King. I will serve you with the zeal of a woman with nine children. A lot is going on in the body of Christ that is a reflection of the poor teachings and mentorship. Lord, how can you do this to me? How can you do this to me? No. I'm going to make an example with someone now that will shock you. Madam, please stand. You, this one looking at me. Yes, please stand. Where are you coming from? This woman, let me tell you a little story. This woman you see follows me almost everywhere 
I go to minister. She's had a child with a condition and she's been trusting God for the healing of that child. I apologize if I embarrass you. I hope I didn't. Look at this. I'm just trying to encourage people. Up until the time I went to Eboi, this woman you see followed me with her child. I observed this woman as she prayed and cried and shouted before God. And I knew that it was not just for the child. From Enugu, she's here again to come and receive the word and to go. Please listen to me. I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially. Go and get that message and listen to it. There is something about our concept of Christianity that we must balance. If we do not balance this, we will be in big trouble. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of things. Brothers and sisters, we are people who are prosperous by the grace of God. God has been merciful to us as individuals and as a ministry. We will never look down on the role of the blessings of God. But far be it from me that wealth and all of this will rise above Christ. With or without them, I tell you the truth, Christ remains Lord. This is what you should learn. All this, this backsliding talk, God didn't do this. I, 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 no, it is, it is proof that you are not grounded. If I come here and I find only 10 people in Koinonia, I will go back concerned and I will say, Lord, what is wrong? But to say, okay, Lord, I quit ministry. I will just go and write books and do seminars. No, sir, I'm a ministry for life. This thing we have come, it's not, it's not an ambition to use and make money. It is not because we didn't have options. It's a call by revelation. We have pledged our life and our blood. So when people love God and don't get money and then they are depressed and just sign out of ministry, say me, I've retired. Oh, what are you doing? I want to start a block industry. Did you have to leave ministry to start the block industry? No. But somebody taught you that you have to choose either of them. Please listen to what I'm telling you and you will be sound and you will be balanced. A precious, precious man of God that I love very much. Just known him for not too long. Um, it's possible that he's even following now. Um, he lost his precious loved one and I remember us just conversing through the night and he was just crying and saying, Apostle, I cannot believe this. This precious woman I love with all my heart has gone to be with the Lord. And I told him, listen to me. I'm a man of God. I'm a miracle worker by God's grace. I have seen all kinds of miracles in my life and in this ministry. But one thing I can tell you is that every time we do not understand God, we tell him, Lord, you are greater. I played for him a song from my phone, Don Moen's song. And I encouraged him. I said, just keep quiet and listen to it as I play this for you. And when he finished, I told him, I'm standing by you and all of that. A foolish man of God would say, no, no, let's forget this. Let's, let's go to that mortuary. I've been to the mortuary before. I've told you this thing. It doesn't mean I'm not a man of faith. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the ways of God. It's the foolishness that is destroying young ministers. They will call police for you one day. If you don't learn the ways of God. There are times. That you may not have answers as a man of God. Don't be embarrassed. It reminds people again that you are not God. And it reminds you too. The pride to always have answers to the issues of men will kill you as a preacher if you don't learn. It is okay to not have answers and recommend them to God who created you, the man of God. I told you I used to feel sad when I prayed for people and they were not healed, especially for barren women, it disturbed me for a very long time. Lord, why would you bring this kind of people to this ministry when there's this kind of problem? Let me ask you a question. What is the condition that must happen in your life today for you to leave God? 
Think about what I said very carefully. Don't assume you have the answer. If I want you to leave God today, what must I do to you? At what point will you leave God and say, I've had enough? When you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, when you don't have school fees for your children, or when you don't feel like you are growing spiritually, at what point in your life, when your business fails, when your property is repossessed, I give you sound doctrine that will preserve your Christian experience that in the maze of debates that continue to fly around the body of Christ, you don't join to scar people, but you stand immovable. I know whom I have believed. Sing it one more time. If, if there's any really elderly person, don't bully anybody, but if there's any elderly person, please, they can sit. Some of this, this space here, some of the worship team people can stand up. The gentlemen can stand up. Stand up and stay by the wall. Let our mothers sit down. If they are mothers or fathers, if you are, if you are an adult, but you are still young, please stand. It doesn't mean that just because... We know what elderly is. If you don't look like one of these are mothers, please stand. If you don't look like one of these are fathers, stand. But just to make sure that uh, we help them. If there's a pregnant woman, let her sit. Our pregnant ladies are... No, no, no. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. If you're pregnant and there is a reason... Why you cannot stand, just wave your hand. Somebody will help you. Why am I doing these things? So that you will learn. And then you will know that these things were not acting. Are we together? We are not doing it to demean the younger people. But we are doing it to show you the excellency of the practice of the law of honor. Are we good? Can I continue? We'll find somewhere. You know, I'm so excited. It just reminds me of how this thing all started. Those days, those days, there was no suit, no nice cloth. Don't let all these things deceive you. We would wear just anything was fine. We didn't have the, the rigor of looking for any adornment that would cause pain in your wardrobe, you just picked your Bible and off you went. And we prayed without wondering who was fine, who was not fine. We knew no man after the flesh. It was Jesus and fire. That was all that was our concern. Praise the Lord. Imagine that you tried to pray to stop this rain and it didn't stop. Because the Bible says we have power over everything. Is that true? So imagine my precious people who were outside. That you lifted your voice and you said, Rain, I stand as a child of God, as a believer. And I stop you. And the rain stopped. 
or the rain did not stop and then you are suddenly embarrassed and discouraged and you say lord this thing does not work no listen i'm not teaching you to be faithless but i'm teaching you that when things do not work do not be embarrassed he is still lord he is still lord whether results happen or results do not happen okay right so let's talk about greatness for a few minutes and then we'll spend time praying if this rain does not stop this night you can be sure that we are going to pray until you come up here that this night <laughs> what what i've been looking for i finally found you'll be free to remove your shoes and pray till you come up here that. the visions you've been wanting to see you will see this night you will pray until the visions come greatness please look up in this kingdom god is not against your being prosperous and your being influential let me balance that very quickly i've heard men of god say all sorts of things if you're standing and you can't write don't worry you can always get the message i know you are wet and your writing materials may be wet don't worry i've heard preachers say that god's idea is not for you to be the most blessed person god's idea is not for you to be this and that in a bit to create balance to materialism that teaching in itself is error god is not against your being great please listen god is not a god of mediocrity heaven is not a place of mediocrity are we together and everywhere the value system of the kingdom has been re received there is excellence there is leadership there is influence so it is all right to aspire to be great. Please listen. It is all right to aspire to be wealthy. It is all right to aspire to rise to the pinnacle, the zenith of your pursuit. But the problem here is when your relevance and your self-worth is tied to those things. Are you getting what I'm teaching you? That when you say, I am a failure until naira and cobble in my pocket proves otherwise there is a big problem there i am a failure until a husband or a wife comes into my life i am a failure until my womb can give birth to a child no no that's where i have a problem a man's life the bible says does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has that means it is possible, quite honestly, to have nothing in this life. And if you have Jesus Christ, it is called the riches. Give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible calls it the riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. What? The unsearchable riches. That means if you have Christ, you are great. You have Christ, you are wealthy. Honestly speaking, you may not be able to do much in this life because the human beings that work in this system will not regard what you call valuable as real value. But I can tell you one thing. That have everything in this life minus Christ, you are not great. True greatness is not measured in silver and gold and pounds and dollars and houses and cars. True wealth is measured in the abundance of your knowledge of Christ. If you are with me, please say amen. amen. You have captured my heart consumed my heart with your love you have captured my heart consumed my heart with your love very powerful song sing it one more time yeah, you have captured my heart consumed my heart with your love 
end of all I say is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's more than enough. If all I say is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's more than enough. Money minus Jesus is poverty. Education minus Jesus is illiteracy. Influence minus Jesus is mediocrity. Jesus is the one who gives value to everything in your life. Redefine your concept of greatness, my brothers and my sisters. To know that anything you have in this life, please listen, minus Jesus, you do not have anything. That means the one thing in your life that gives value to everything must be protected at all cost. Are we together now? Yes. We have garages for our cars. We have stores for our food. But many times we do not have a place for God in our homes and our hearts. We have little safes maybe in our houses where we keep the little money that we have. We have bank accounts. We have ATM cards that we protect so jealously. The moment your ATM falls, by the next day you're on your way to the bank to get another one. But where is his place in your heart? Listen very carefully. And sometimes we men of God have brought a wrong concept. When you stand to see Joshua Selman dress, ah, this is wonderful. That may be wonderful, but all this is nonsense without Jesus. I repeat, nonsense without Jesus. The true value of a man, my brothers and my sisters, is not the jeep that is parked. When you know this, no man will intimidate you who does not have Jesus. You don't stand and a millionaire comes without Jesus. And just because he's driving a very pricey car and traveling in a private jet... You stand with your Jesus and look stupid. Not after today. I know that I will increase. I know that I will strive to be the best. But with or without prosperity, I am still wealthy and I am still great. This is very powerful. It's a revelation that God gave me early in life. I have never felt more useful more important because of the things around me. I tell you sincerely, the way I felt before I had a car and the way I feel now, in all fairness, is not really different. The only difference is that it's afforded me more convenience. But to feel more important with a car key or without a car key, it will never happen to me. Whether a car or no car, I know that I'm valuable. Jesus has made me so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you pass jam or you don't pass jam, passing jam is just a system of getting you to navigate the path of success on earth. Whether you pass jam or not, you are still valuable. Whether you go abroad or not, you are still valuable. Please listen to me. As a graduate, whether you have a job or not, I'm showing you the antidote to depression and suicide and all of these things. Come, Sam. Come, Pastor Alpha. Come, Pastor Femi. Now, look at this gentleman looking all sharp. And then imagine with me, for instance, that you stand among them and you feel, I'm not rich. I am not this. This is what the devil will tell you. Remember that Satan is the master of the sense realm. Everybody say the sense realm. That means you will use what you see, what you hear, to tell you things about your life that God did not say. So he will tell you, you cannot belong here. Why? Because you don't have this suit. You don't have this kind of shoe, this kind of that. And then you back out. This guy is not born again. This guy is not born again. This guy is an idol worshiper. But just because they have physical things, you reduce Jesus to become nothing. And you will give up Jesus a thousand times to become like this man. 
I will never envy any unbeliever in my life. I will be inspired by their achievements, but not to the detriment of the riches of Christ in my heart. Is God speaking to us? Men of God, learn this. It is not when you begin to wear golden rings and golden chains and you have a convoy of people driving you. That's not when you become successful as a man of God. Please hear me. It is not when you have protocol standing at your back and call. You now say ministry is doing well. That's a devilish indoctrination. Be excellent, but not at the detriment of your spiritual sanity. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more. What's the other part? I've got something more than gold. I'm telling to the world. Is more than One more time. When you understand this song, you will go back to your one room. Now that it's raining, maybe rain is falling on your bed now. And you sit down and suddenly you are wondering, but if I really knew God, wouldn't I be rich? Wealth has nothing to do with the knowledge of God. Wealth has to do with the application of the principles of value and productivity. Don't reduce the wealth of your Christian experience and insult the wealth of Christ in you. You check your CGPA and you see a third class and you just say, I'm finished. Ah! This life is over. No job. No nothing. Ah. I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to myself. Jesus, Jesus is more than gold. I tell it to the world. Jesus, Jesus you're more, more than gold. I tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Somebody met me years ago and said there's a trend of suits, apostle. That at your level you should start wearing. I said, why? He said, because that's what is raining. I said, I don't know who they are, but let me tell you this. I dress well, but I will never be under pressure. Never be under pressure. I will be as decent and excellent as I can be, but I reject any pressure upon my head to mismanage my finances because I'm trying to prove to people that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive with or without miracles. Did you hear what I said? My prosperity is not the reason Jesus is alive. Anybody waiting for me to be rich, to believe in Jesus, will soon go to hell. Because wealth is not the seed for salvation. The convicting power of the Spirit is. Please be careful so that you don't get under pressure to say, I want people to see my results so that they will be born again. It is true that your results affect them. But if their heart is made up to be hardened, there is nothing they will see in your life that will take them to Jesus. People saw the miracles Jesus performed. Yet when he resurrected, some doubted. It takes the spirit to convict men. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. I'm drumming it today that in coming up hither, your greatest value is Christ. Not a Benz, not a Navigator, not a Rolls Royce. Thank God for these things. But they are simply metals without Christ. 
Are we together? Thank God for your beauty. If that is the highest perception of value in your life, then it's unfortunate. Christ in us. Talk to me, believers. Christ in us. Christ in me. Not certificate with me. Not a good shoe with me. Not just PhD with me. I don't demean these things. We are blessed people and successful people in this ministry. But I tell you, I count all things but dung for the excellency of Christ. God forbid, but if my house is to catch fire now, and I stand before God to tell you, if my house is to catch fire, and they tell me, Apostle, you have one minute to carry the most valuable things in your house before it gets burned to ashes. The first thing I'm going to carry, I won't carry a Bible. You think I'll carry a Bible, I can buy another one. I won't carry a Bible. I will carry my notes. The truths that God gave me. Are we together? I will carry my notes. Number two, I will carry my phone. My phone is important. And my laptop, my, my gadgets. I will carry them. Number two, or number three, I will carry, I think I will carry my card that has my ATM and all these things. <laughs> and it's not because of loss or fear. It's out of responsibility. If I'm not able to carry it, I will not feel bad. Once I carry these books, and I can carry my phone. My contacts mean a lot to me. Any other thing in my house can burn to ashes. The cars can burn to ashes from where they came from. How do you respond when things leave you? It tells me to the degree to which Jesus is enthroned in your life. You lost 10,000 naira till today you are still depressed. You lost it last year. You still believe you will find it. It's carnality. My brothers and my sisters, it is lost. Are we together? Jesus. The greatest asset this man has that stands before you is not a flourishing ministry. It's not bank accounts with money. It is not properties and assets. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, the most valuable thing in my life is not outside me. I don't trust anything outside me. They can come and they can go. Is God doing something in your mind today? This grip on things as the proof of success. No. Don't be carried away by material things. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. Please hear me. The real value of the believer is the riches of Christ. I need to drum this again and again. So don't act. Whatever leaves you Check whether Jesus Christ left too. If he's still there, relax. You are still blessed. You are still great. You are still wealthy. Even when death comes to take your life, if Jesus goes with you, you did not lose. That's why Paul said to die is gain. Provided he left with you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Certificate without Jesus Christ is vanity. It may not look like it because of the job it can give you. But keep growing old. You will soon find out that everything minus Jesus is vanity. Marriage minus Jesus is vanity. It doesn't look like it because of the children that come. It doesn't look like it because of the status that it gives you. Ah. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything. One more time. Everything is you. Everything 
more time. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. That's a true believer. Alpha, Omega of my life. I cannot define my worth by what phone I'm using. Hear me, believers. There are some of you now, your prayer request that you've written for next week is a phone. Oh God, give me a phone of 200,000. What's the most expensive phone? What's the class of phones? A what? iPhone. So you have an iPhone and you move around with it, expecting respect, demanding respect. I have an iPhone. No, that's not somebody who knows Christ. My shoe is 250,000. That shoe cannot raise the dead. That shoe cannot give life to any other person. I'm not teaching you to be mediocre. I'm teaching you to be blessed but with understanding that everything around your life minus Jesus is useless. Our fathers used to say, take the world and give me Jesus. We hate what they said, but the idea was that nothing compares to him. But right now, our loss-driven generation says, give me Jesus and give me other things. This is what we mean. I don't want to lose anyone. Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with prosperity? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with greatness and appointment? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ to a flourishing ministry? I am not great because I lead a great ministry. No. I'm not great because of the results that happen in this ministry. Please don't get it wrong. You are not great the day you enter your own house. Hmm. You are not great the day you buy the car you want. You are not great the day you see nine zeros or six, seven, eight, nine zeros behind the figures in your bank account. The wealth of my relationship with Jesus is something that nothing in this life has the capacity to take. I'm teaching you and I'm giving you a new idea. The carnality in this our world and our generation will destroy us if we don't restore Jesus back to his place and will depress a lot of young people. The next time someone sees you and says with all this you're going to church, look at you. You can't even afford food of 1,000. You tell him no problem. I am learning the principles. I am coming. But let me tell you for your information. It is not these things that define my value. My value has been defined. The day Jesus said it is finished on that cross, let me tell you sincerely, he stamped my value. God gave Jesus Christ as a receipt to collect me. When you carry 100 naira to buy Zobo, which one do you love more? The Zobo more than the money. So the father carried Jesus and gave him to take you back. And some, some person with, with 500,000 wants to look down on the power of Jesus in your life. I refuse to be defined by what is around me or not around me. I need the things around me that makes for a successful life. Why? Because they add up all together and help my efficiency as far as my living on earth is concerned, and then my promoting the interest of God. But never will it be the basis of my confidence. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Believers, talk to me. But we will trust in the name of our God. He says, vain is the help of man. Never put your confidence in the abundance of the things that surround you. Anything that is truly great, I put it inside me. If it cannot enter inside me, it's not great enough. My bank account cannot enter inside me. Huh. No. The closest thing 
to Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit in my life is my intellectual property. At least it entered my brain. It didn't reach my heart, but it entered somewhere. That means I value my intellectual property even more than money. Please have priority for your life. Don't go back home worshipping clothes, worshipping houses, worshipping cars. It's idolatry. Worshipping talent. The riches of Christ. This thing has given me rest. Way before God started giving me cars and vehicles. And not because I didn't have the capacity to get them. God prohibited me from getting all these material things for a long time. And I wondered why. Until the Spirit of God revealed it to me. He said, I want you to be a correct model to the young man. That their sense of worth is not in the things around them. Miracle service will be here with crowds outside. I would dress with a suit that can buy a bike that is carrying me. And the bike man will come and drop me. I would drop from the bike with my Bible. And enter with joy. I'll never forget one time that the protocol collected the car of someone to come and pick me. I rebuked them. I said, never collect any member's car to come and preach, to come and carry me. Coming for koinonia with a car does not add or remove the anointing on my head. When I was fasting, the car was not there. So today that God has brought some of this tea and bread, I will be stupid to believe that because of this tea and bread, I am greater. No, sir. My greatness is sub. In fact, if ever I am greater, it is because of lives that are transformed, not things acquired. Do not measure greatness in this kingdom just by things acquired. Things acquired should be the last of the indices to measure greatness. It is the world of Christ. Then number two, the opportunity to provide transformation in lives. If Pastor Alpha was a drunkard, and through my life and ministry, he has become a man of God, for instance. This is true impact. This is greatness. Next time someone tells you, I am great, tell him, show me who you changed. If you cannot show me a life, not just somebody you fed, who came to know the Lord through your life? You are poor unless your money brings someone to Jesus. You are ignorant except your education provides a platform for someone to know the Lord. John chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6 and then to 7, remember what the Bible says. There was a man sent from God, he says. His name was John. He says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness to the truth that through him, his witness, all men might believe. The real value of anything in your life is how it contributes to glorifying the name of Jesus and then advancing the cause or, or, or making for the betterment of people's lives. There are many millionaires who are not great. There are many educated people who are not great. There are many pastors with crowds who are not great. There are many miracle workers who are not great. It is the measure of Christ in you and the measure of the impact that your life can provide. He is everything. He is everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. Is you. you are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. So I can take my gold and lay it before him. My silver lay it before him. My achievements lay it before him and say, Jesus, you are above them all. That when men clap for me because of things, I remind them that none of these things can take you. Are we together? 
We are going to pray. Thank God it's raining. You will pray. You will pray. There's a bus to carry you. But you will pray. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Please give me volume. Much less love and endless word. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. One more time, listen. What is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hey, your presence is heaven to me. Sing it from the depth of your heart and with understanding. Your presence is heaven. Give me you, hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Hallelujah. First prayer point. Lord, I'm tired of exalting shadows in my life. Let everything be dethroned tonight and Jesus alone lifted to the zenith, the pinnacle of my life. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of exalting certificates above Jesus. Tired of exalting my bank account above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting anointing above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting visions above Jesus. Tired of exalting gifts and dreams and prophecies above Jesus. Tired of exalting ministry above Jesus. Marriage above Jesus. Business above Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Don't look around. Pray. Be lifted high, be lifted high.
exalted above the things of this world. Let me show you how to truly be great. When you come up hither, Jesus also comes up hither in your life. Higher, higher than anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point is a very personal prayer point. Lord, what attachment do I have to anything in this world above you? What attachment? There is nothing wrong with having things. But when these things have you, they are about to destroy you. Lord, detach me. Detach me from any other thing that is not you. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Detach me. Detach me from the obsession for money. Detach me from the obsession for fame. Detach me from the obsession for things. Detach me, oh God. Let my true value be Jesus. Please pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Detach me from the pressure of wanting respect on account of what I have acquired, on account of my certificates. They are not useless, but they are nothing nothing to be compared with Jesus Christ. Detach me, oh God. Detach me, oh God. Is someone praying? Use tonight, use this opportunity God has given. Detach yourself. And with it will go the high blood pressure. And with it will go the depression. And with it will go the suicidal thoughts. I detach myself. The pressure to have things so as to gain respect. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Praise the Lord. Now, listen, everybody. We're praying. There are many of us here. We come from families. Please listen. And we come from territories where the prevalent mindset is earn your respect by the things you show. Are we together? Now, there's nothing wrong with our families and our region. But I'm just saying that many of us, by default, are under pressure. They look at you as a lady and say, the day you bring the man you will marry, then you will earn our respect. The day you bring us a child, you will earn our respect. The day, gentlemen, you bring us an employment letter from a reputable firm. So there's pressure everywhere. What are you doing? Well, I'm trusting God. I'm teaching in a small place. That's it. You are, you are a shame to this family you hear. You are a reproach to this family. Look at your younger ones, they say. Look at this and that. You are going to pray. Father, the stress. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to dethrone those things and say my life and my work will never be built on the expectations of men. I cancel it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. I know you've not been able to take in but refuse to allow yourself what come from being able to be pregnant pregnant or not Jesus exalted in your life is the greatest asset you have living in a rented apartment or not Jesus in your life Christ glorified in and through you is your greatest testimony Apostle, I've never healed the sick. I also want to work miracles. 
and you are fasting and killing yourself for the wrong reason my greatest testimony is Jesus glorified my greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life my greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life my greatest testimony is that God dwells in me the Christ lives in me hallelujah hallelujah please listen to me we are going to round up shortly but listen to me there is no telling the degree of pressure some of us are sitting on pressure every day Your father says at your age, I was already a millionaire. You are now 35. Shame on you. You can't even send money back home. And so all you are seeking for in God is his hand to prosper you. So that you will buy a car and rush back home and say, finally, you want a car. Here it is. If all I have is Jesus. I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Truly, if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Prophesy one more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen to me. When you see me teach like this, it is because the Spirit of God is ministering to us. Brothers, hear me. By God's grace, we will continue to teach you the principles that will empower you and make you great. But don't get into... That's why many young boys today are becoming criminals. Do you know why? Because they have told them you must bring... God gives people speed. I agree. But remember my teaching. When your soul dies for you to prosper, it's not true prosperity. Many young men right now are becoming criminals. And you know why? Because of pressure. And please let me encourage us, those of us who are parents here and listening. Let's be careful as we put pressure on our children. Go and bring a man for me, to, a man that you will marry. Go and bring a woman that you will marry. Give us a child. We are waiting. Bring a car. We are tired. Let's be careful. It takes time for anything valuable to emerge. Allow people to go through the law of process until God places his hand upon their lives. Every one of us started from somewhere. If you saw some of us 15 years ago, there would be nothing in us that is desirable. But God was in the making. And we were given the opportunity to grow. We must give others opportunity to grow. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody put pressure on you and say, bring this. Some of you at home right now, you don't even have gari and sugar and you're embarrassed. Because when they tell you, confess, the, I am a child of God, I am a this and that, you are ashamed. There's nothing to be ashamed of, my brother and my sister. Every one of us, there were times, we've, you, you hear me share my story here. I'm not ashamed of yesterday. Because yesterday was the ladder that brought me to my today. You are climbing your ladder, climb it with honor. When someone comes to your house and all you have is Gary, don't go and borrow minerals from any shop. Tell the person, as you know, as Apostle has been teaching, I'm on my way climbing the ladder. Sincerely, I don't have much physically. A wise person will say, I understand. We listen to the message together. A foolish person will say, you are a shame. Leave him to carry his ignorance out of your life. Are we together? I want to drum it. It is ugly to see men attached to things. The secret to getting things is to be attached to God. 
the more you are detached to things, they will follow you. You will drive them, they will refuse to go back. There is nothing in my life today, I stand by the truth of heaven under God. There is nothing in my life today, I cannot give. There is nothing that is too special in my life that cannot live. No. When anything enters my life, there is an orientation center before it finally arrives. It's given an orientation. You are a temporary asset. At any point, the master calls, you are out and you are going. The only thing that I will die protecting is Christ in me who is the hope of glory. If I fall down here, my brothers and sisters, and I stop breathing, I know what you will do. You will pray for me for a few minutes trying to get me back to life. And then if it does not work, the doctors will come together and you will rush me to Shika. And if they put a stethoscope and say, ah, this guy has died. How can our apostle die? While you are talking, I'm watching you. I'm saying, oh dear, you better listen to my messages. Go back and get koinonia. I'm on my way. I'm already going happy. You pray for me to come back. I see those chariots. You are joking. I'm on my way. I mean, apostle, don't talk like this. What if you die? Don't be foolish. Don't you know death also listens? Freedom came in my life when I stopped holding things. Freedom came in my life when everything minus Jesus in my life is a stranger. Everything in my life is a visitor. No visitor sleeps in your house. No matter how late he must look for, bike and go away. The only occupant, not even a tenant, is Jesus. He's given me peace. I'm telling you sincerely. I live a very peaceful life. The higher he lifts me, the more confident I am. If you are confident because an alert entered your account, something will happen when the alert is no more there. This is what God is working in you today. I know it looks like time is going. But pay attention. Could this be why you are praying and blessings are never coming? Because the affinity you have for those things is a risk for God to trust you with it. There are preachers who want anointing so bad they will remove Jesus to create space for the anointing. Jesus, come out. Let me have some more space for oil. Billy Graham never performed any known miracle as we know i don't believe that is the optimal for a preacher we should press to every dimension available but one thing we know is that billy graham changed lives his gospel molded civilization captains of industry listen to him kings listen to him that is true wealth Come up hither, and the first thing he saw was the throne room. Come up hither, and the first thing he saw was the throne room. When he was down, he saw different things, but now when he rose higher, his attention was called to the worship of only one person. The rain is almost done. We'll pray one more prayer. And then I'll take the altar call and then we'll be ready to dismiss ourselves when the rain is done. But please hear me. The Lord told me something years ago. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. I thought it was a joke. And I said, Lord, you mean that I become a mirror? It's easy for me. It's easier to reflect Jesus in our world today than to reflect yourself. The world will always show you something wrong. So reflect Jesus and be at peace. If you reflect yourself, they will say you didn't bab well this week. Your head is too big next week.
Ah, you reduce it, it's now too small. You would have left it the other way. Reflect Jesus and enter your Sabbath. Hide behind the cross and let men know if he prospers me, he only prospered so that his name will be lifted. If he anoints me, he only brought the anointing so that his name will be lifted. Listen, please don't trivialize this night's teaching. I'm, I'm pointing to you the origin of high blood pressure. BP and all of these things come from this revelation. I need to prove a point. How will they know I'm not an anyhow person until I show? So let me get a job and show. My life and all that consists in this life has been poured like a drink offering. I've told the Lord, do whatever you want to do with me. Sincerely, it's a prayer. I have lost the pain and the psychological pressure that comes trying to live life my own way. I found peace when I lost the consciousness of trying to prove a point. I found the anointing when I stopped thinking about miracles and breakthrough. When I started thinking about Jesus and the people he sent me to, then the anointing came. For as long as I thought about my reputation, let people know that you called me. Very sincere, but it never brought grace. But I said, Lord, let them see you through my life. Give me an opportunity to be a blessing within the lifetime you have given me. Let me tell you this. If Christ tarries and my work on earth is done, I don't want it to be written in my grave. Oh, great man. This, all that is nonsense. He changed lives. Ah, what a testimony. He was truly a lover of God. And he, through his life, nations were restored to Jesus. If you can write that, buy a coffin of 2,000 and put my body inside it. Put it even inside pajamas. That's the closest thing to sleep. Use the suit money and give a man of God who is still alive. Don't waste money by mundane nonsense. I have learned the value of living. The value of living is living for Jesus. When you live for Jesus, you have cheated life. That in life and in death, you have won. Hmm. You will live a happy life, depression free. Depression free. You learn that it is about you, but not all about you. Can I pray for you? Take it down. I want to pray for you. We will search for you and we will find you. We will find you. With all us. I have searched for you and I have found you. I have found you. You've won my heart. And I will lift my voice to you in worship. And I will worship. When all my heart If you will search for him You will find him Truly You will find him With all your heart That's the call tonight If you will search for him You will find him You will find him where all your Father, I cry to you, O God of heaven, on behalf of your precious people. I love them with all my heart and you know it. 
I desire that they rise to dimensions of rest and I'm showing them one of the ways tonight that the way to rest is to live for Jesus the understanding that you are the definition of greatness in a man and that nothing nothing can define greatness in any man higher than you by earthly standards money achievements can seem to bring certain levels of influence and they are important but teach us tonight the all-surpassing excellency of Jesus in our hearts the hope of glory the crown the zenith the definition of greatness in this kingdom is Christ enthroned in a life teach us that the definition of greatness in this kingdom is not the acquisition of things but Christ enthroned and exalted in a life help us oh God to value your presence more than money to value your presence more than gold to value your presence more than the mundane things of this world and Lord in placing that value on you may we lay up gold as dust in the name of Jesus Christ I detach you from any connection and any affinity you have to things especially money I declare that by this service let there be a cutting away in the name of Jesus the obsession that you have to derive respect based on the things around you I pray that God will redefine value to you I pray for grace to survive the pressure that comes from society to conform to a mold so as to be respected that you will teach all around you that true value is Jesus and Christ enthroned in a life in the name of Jesus Christ listen and I pray for you that whilst you focus on exalting Jesus may everything that you need even the things you did not dream will come to your life at this level may my God bring them to your life in the name of Jesus Christ nothing in this life will ever possess you in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray sincerely sincerely please walk on us walk on us let this detachment continue even throughout this weekend in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now, please listen. Those are the other overflows. I know you may not be able to come, but there are people in here right now. Listen to me. On hearing my teaching tonight, the Lord is calling you higher, higher than the realm that you have been. And for many of us, Jesus is speaking to you, even through my voice. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, it's time for you to surrender completely and to receive of my life. Jesus is asking many of us, you've been carrying luggages. Please hold on, no movement, please. Let me just make the altar call. There are people here that the Lord is speaking to. Probably you're here for the first time. You've been here multiple times and the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now. And he's saying, my son, my daughter, you have to relinquish attachment to these things. You need Jesus, not just as a religious proposition. Jesus did not come for Christians. His assignment is not to make Christians. His assignment is to lift men to become the lovers of God, representations of the life of God. You are here and you belong to any of these categories, let it be my joy tonight to lead you to Jesus. Nothing to be ashamed of. If you are in the crowd and you wish to come, I'm sure that the ushers will clear the way. Wherever you are, I'm counting one to five. Our time is up. Please boldly make your way right to the front here. Right to the front here. Someone is bold enough to make that decision. Don't wait for someone to be the first. Be the first. If someone is coming, please clear the way. I see a few people coming. God bless you.
God bless you. Please clear the way for them. Is this the best you can do? I don't believe this is the only person. There are people the Holy Spirit is speaking to. The Holy Spirit is speaking to. Make your way quickly. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. He's giving you a new beginning. This is why you came tonight. No matter how far, make your way. Don't say, Apostle, they are looking at me. Please stand. Please stand. They are not looking at you to laugh at you. God bless you, Ma. God bless you, Sas. They are not looking at you to laugh at you. This is a family. They are looking at you to encourage you to say, I rejoice with you and I salute your boldness. <laughs> Hallelujah. In one minute, I believe that there are people too who are saying, Apostle, I remember making such a decision, but right now as it is, I know that I need to truly rededicate my life to Jesus. I'm not doing it for the first time, but I really need to do it seriously. I feel that the, the things of this life have strangled the reality of Jesus Christ in my life, and I need that restoration. You belong to that category and you want to join them. In one minute, our time is up. Please, quickly, quickly, make the bold step to come join them right now. It's not by force. Nobody will pressure you, but you know yourself and you know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. The Bible says that in the day that you hear his voice, it says, harden not your heart as they did in the provocation and in the wilderness. Are you coming? God bless you. Join them very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute your bold decision. May I request all of you who are standing, just lift your right hand, if you will, and repeat this prayer after me. Do so with understanding. Don't be embarrassed. Jesus is here the one you came for. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I love you and I believe in you with all my heart that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word and I desire that you be exalted in my life. Therefore, I receive your life in exchange for my life. I receive your righteousness. I receive your grace. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I declare that my sins are forgiven. Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, and my King. Amen. Keep your hands lifted, Jesus. Thank you for these precious ones. I decree and I declare over you that the life of God that is now within you will begin to produce and it will be effectual. In the name of Jesus, I plant in you a hunger for the things of the Spirit. And I pray in Jesus' name that you will continue to move from glory to glory. You will mount up with wings as the eagles. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. And I declare that the joy of salvation is yours. And you will begin to walk in the consciousness of this life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. There's a lady waving her hands. All of you, please, may I request that you follow this. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video. As well, share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.